Alrighty, where are you now? Y'all can hear us now and y'all can see us. We are up and at it. This is the host Val again with the Love and Victory Show with Val. I thank you guys so much for being patient with us. Uh, I want to thank our uh, phenomenal uh, engineer team over there. They just keep it, they keep it going. They never, never stop. Uh, and I want to thank Raise the Praise, uh, Mr. Paul, for getting in there behind the scenes assisting us as well. This morning, the show is going to be something special and it's true to spirit what we were going through with you thought you broke me i want to say they thought they had us uh, but the loving show has the hand of god all over it so we just keep pressing through it uh carter gave us a prayer and allow god to come into the room and he is here and, uh brother carter we want to get your scripture and then i'm gonna come back with the thought of the day and we're going to take the show to the next level all right, all right all right good morning everyone and again and again i say good morning welcome to the show hey um in light of everything that happened this morning uh the scripture is going to come from the book of philippians the fourth chapter amen and begins at the fourth verse it says rejoice in the lord always and again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Verse eight, side, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are good of, of, of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praise, meditate on these things. And... Verse 9, final verse says, The things which you've learned and have received and heard and saw me, be do, these do. Amen. Amen. And the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add a blessing to the hear readers and doers of the most holy and righteous word. Amen. All righty, all righty. That's right on time, babe. Thank you for that uh, word. Yeah. Uh, well, you have to, you know, just to elaborate a little yeah. bit on the scripture mm -hmm. there. You know, we came in this morning and, you know, uh, silence was in on the air this morning. and We couldn't get uh, the, the God's word out to his people. And so we just want to let you know that God is still on the throne. Uh, Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Even mm -hmm. when things are looking like it's bleak, looking mm -hmm. like it's not going to fare well with you, uh, you can rejoice in the Lord because he's always standing there and he will show up and show out. Amen. You know, uh, that is so real on so many levels. It's not just this morning walking into the, the uh, quietness of the room, mm -hmm. but just dealing in life. Uh, because a lot of times we just feel like, oh, God, this isn't going right. This happened. This is falling apart. And we just want to give up. We mm -hmm. want to just, you know, just. Almost gave up. Well, not this morning, but there are times that you just feel like, you know, mm -hmm. something hits you yeah. and you get to a point that you just like, oh, my God, what next? And uh, we just have to stay in the fight and keep trusting God. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. In the midst of it all. Just yes, man. Keep trusting. Well, the quote of the day that I have, I think, is also in line with the show and what is going on. Mm -hmm. You can't break me because I get my strength from God. You can't break a woman who seeks her happiness in God. Mm -hmm. You can't break me anymore because I was already broken by him. Mm -hmm. And as long as I keep my hand trusting in him, as long as I keep my eyes in him and trusting in him, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. As long as I keep my eyes on him and trusting in him, mm -hmm. I can't be broken. Right. That is my thought of the day. That thought of the day kind of make me think about the uh, the Apostle Peter in the Bible okay. uh, when uh, when he was uh, on ship 
and saw Jesus coming to him walking on water. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and he begged Jesus to allow him to come out on water with him. And Jesus told him to come. And Peter began to walk on the water to the Lord, towards the Lord. But he had his, when he had his eyes on the Lord, he was, fine. He was able to walk upon mm -hmm. the waters. And so what your thought of the day and, and your quote says, when you took your eye off come on, of man. him, and then you begin to uh, feel the brokenness. So mm. Peter began to sink. And so the in essence of everything that you just spoke of, keep focus on him yes. who is able to keep you from falling. You know, I, I think everything just in line, but I want to actually um, throw a question over to my team. Before uh, you do that, let, let's... let's uh, Y'all got a hand clap of praise because I want to hand clap of praise into our our team here that yeah. has that has come together. Uh, oh, oh, that, this is gonna, thank you because this is going to be aligned with the question I'm throwing their way. How do y'all Saturday after Saturday get up and come in here and uh, y'all have it, always have it set up ready to go? Um, you guys never seem rattled. You just always excited. Uh, how do y'all keep it going? How do y'all always manage to not let us see the pressure? Share it with me. Who want to go first? <laughs> um, you know, I don't know because sometimes I feel I can feel myself getting like sweaty because I'm like stress stressing myself out. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I've learned to kind of, um, I always say I'm putting on a show, you know what I mean? Like, yes. I, I got to put on my acting face and just act like everything is okay, you know? Because in the end of the day, um, if 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 you're taking on, a, like, a leadership role and you're frazzled and you, you know, freak out and you don't know what's going on, um, then that then the people around you will follow. The people that look to you for help or will follow. So I try to just kind of put on a face, even if I'm a little stressed out, I try to just uh, find the best solution possible. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, I appreciate that, Abby. And you know, you put that face on well, and trust me and believe me when I say our listeners truly appreciate it. What mm -hmm. about you, you, Jacob? Well, so for me, this isn't my first job in radio. <laughs> and so I know all too well that when you're trying to do a live show, things will go wrong. Uh, you kind of just have to roll with the punches. Uh, unfortunately, I've been in jobs where uh, my boss has sort of uh, take, he took a of my shortcomings mm. to like sort of make it a bit on air. Oh, wow. To kind of make me the punching bag. Oh, wow. So I, I've, cool. it, it wasn't cool. No, and and no. I kind of lost it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I've definitely been in this situation before and you got to have a a thick skin mm -hmm. to kind of get through it. But one thing you can rest assured that brother Carter nor myself or anyone that's associated with this team will make you guys a punching bag. Uh, we appreciate you all so much. Uh, and it's not just Saturdays that we appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all week long. We appreciate you guys too. Thank God you. God bless you. All righty then. Well, let's just get this show popping this morning. They had to wait. Uh, I can't Yes, we'll just start now. Give them a quick song, a really good quick song. And then we're going to come back with our Either one of thought them. of the day. And uh, not the thought of the day. Through the grapevine. Through the grapevine. Yeah. Cynthia Wilburn, I want to say good morning to you. I haven't seen you out here in a while. I'm so glad that you have chimed in Almost. and you are enjoying us Almost. this morning. I want to hear your comments. They thought you, they thought they broke us. We're going to show us. No, you thought you broke me. Uh, I want to hear your comments from that this morning. Everybody, please chime in. Keep the board hot. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. All righty. Thank you. God bless you. He kept me. God kept me in the midst of it all. And, whoa, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the Love and Victory show with Val. Val, what are you talking about? Val is, can't talk, Val can talk, but I can't hear anything. Val, we are, 
I cannot hear them, but that's okay. While they fix me up, I'm just going to keep rolling. We're going to go in with the Through the Grapevine segment today. Okay, then. So our first story is some scandalous tea, let me tell you. Um, I don't know if y'all heard, the Good Morning America hosts, uh, some of the hosts were actually, um, they were taken off the show for a cheating scandal. So uh, we got this story from... um, the Daily Beast um, and the ABC executives from Good Morning America, their name is TJ Holmes and Amy Robach. Uh, they're from the show's third hour. They are in, uh, indefinitely uh, let go from the show um, amid uh, news coming out that they had a romantic relationship. Were they let go or they are uh, on suspended for the investigation? They, they were let go. They were let go. I think at first um, they were given like... Um, they, they were allowed to come. What would you say, Jacob? Weren't they allowed to come back on the show for like one episode or something that while they figured it out and did an investigation? Yeah, it was uh, it was very awkward uh, when uh, news came out that they were in an extramarital relationship. Of course, their side of the story is, well, our marriages were ending or almost over. And that's when we got together. But when that news broke, uh, basically, they gave one of them the day off. They had one come back. Uh, they had. um uh, the gentleman, uh, TJ Holmes, come back by himself. And then they tried one more show where they brought them both back together and they were making Christmas cookies. And you can tell there was just this energy, this awkward it really energy. Was. It was, you could just get what energy was. Well, first of all, they needed to be. This is my personal. I'm going to let y'all get through. I got a lot to say on this. So go. Cool. Are y'all through with y'all part? Uh, well, we do have uh, a video here. Oh, okay. Oh. And uh, and you can kind of see where if you didn't know they were having a relationship off screen, you'd be like, wow, they have great chemistry. But now that this is all out, you go back and watch some of the old videos and you're like, there's yeah, definitely going something on. going on. And we're going to play that right now. Okay. And this is a. I run behind you and you keep the pace. You're the pacer. That may be the pacey. Yes. Yeah, you're the pacey. Okay, so yeah. But we're you... going to both be finishers. And that's what counts. <laughs> you are one cheesy, inspirational person. Another tip is to train with friends. Uh, you set the agenda. You say, here's oh, what we're meeting. I did. So cute. And okay. at least you feel the excitement of doing it with someone. You don't feel alone. They're making jokes about uh, finishing together and they can't help themselves but crack up. A uh, very juvenile kind of schoolyard flirting and things going on like foolishness. Okay, well, I'm ready to go in on this. Go so for I it. I have yeah. my opinion. First of all, when you're married, I don't feel sorry for any of them because first they're representing my brand and my company. It's obviously the news was that way. It's my personal opinion. And you're married. And you come on here. Both of you all are married. And you come on here and you're cheating. And you're openly, you're openly, you guys have chosen to be married to your partner. This is not something that's just going on. Uh, Apparently, he's been cheating with several women around the office. Oh, my goodness. uh, Allegedly. But I have a problem. If you don't want a person, walk away from it. But, you know, at least honor your vows. So I just really have a real problem with that. Anybody else? What do you feel about that? I think that marriage is a covenant relationship Mm -hmm. between two people that God has ordained. He created two people to come together. And I think as Christians, it's extremely important to look at how created marriage and how we can function within that covenant relationship. So anything outside of that is going to be friction, and Satan loves that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Miss Yielded, yes, ma'am. What's your thought over there on the uh, on the cheating scandal? Um, well, I I personally have no tolerance for cheating, mm. and definitely not to uh, bring it in the public eye, as you said, to even be on someone else's brand platform, whatever. With that type of behavior, is just unacceptable. Yeah. So, it makes a mockery of relationships, marriage, and then, like you said, like the business, like yeah. Good Morning America. Now it's always going to have that kind of reputation riding on its back, too. So not only is it like, you know, a personal kind of moral, maybe you shouldn't do that, but then you're also, I mean, nothing's worth losing your job, you know? You know, I 
We are sometimes people, and I guess I really understand it early on in my professional career that until I had my own brand, have my own brand now, it's so important that it's not your company. Uh, you just can't come up on somebody else's business and platform and do what you want to do, period. And so um, I think they both should go to the house and not look back. <laughs> we have one more story for you guys. Um, so this one, we have been ke- kind of keeping up with Kanye a little bit. Oh, my. Um, yes. Uh-huh. So we also talked about how Elon Musk um, had bought Twitter and kind of the Why scandal. Why do you have to put this picture up? Of Elon or of Kanye? Of Kanye. <laughs> because he looks, you know, a little disheveled, you know, which I think it is a good no representation. Better. All of his other pictures, he's in like a full ski mask, like yeah. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not even eye holes. <laughs> <laughs> a hazmat suit. <laughs> okay. This is the only recent good picture a I could find of him. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, so he was, um, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he reinstated Kanye and Trump, I believe, too, um, mm-hmm. which received a lot of backlash. Um, Although a lot of people like um, that Elon bought Twitter because, you know, he's an advocate for free speech. He reinstated Kanye and almost immediately Kanye started tweeting some nonsense. Um, He tweeted, quote, "Um, I like Hitler. I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis, quote, end quote. So. Yeah, the, he got he got banned for inciting violence, um, and he also I believe it was either on Instagram or Twitter I cannot remember. Um, he had like tweeted or put something up about a swastika too, and so um, Elon did have to. He said, "I, I tried my best despite oh, that." God. He again violated the rule oh, against God. incitement to violence. Oh God, I'm trying to hold myself. <laughs> and they put yeah. this stuff. Kanye, they put this stuff Kanye, up here. Kanye West is blind. Okay, I'm gonna say this. They put you guys put this stuff up there. I believe. To get me riled up. Yes, Absolutely. We love yes, it. They working yes. on it too. They are. You can you tell I'm trying to hold my field over here? A couple things. First of all, Elon is not doing anything for anybody other than himself. Let's just put mm-hmm. that in disclaimer. And again, this is my personal opinion. Uh, the fact that the first thing that he did was to come in and reinstate Donald Trump speaks volumes right there. He's saying right away, uh, I want to start this foolishness back up. That's just my personal opinion. Anybody have a difference of opinion? Come on. That was his reason for buying it. So the the whole thing. Then we take down, don't get me wrong, because Trump did. Trump is doing what he's been doing since he got in the office. Uh, then we take down, uh, we, we talk about freedom of speech. And that's why I always say when people need to be careful when they say that they are, uh, we have a right in freedom of speech. But it is, I believe that it is uh to what serves the purpose, who's serving the purpose at that particular time. I don't agree with uh, some of the things that Kanye has said, just like I don't agree with some of the things, probably more of the things that Trump has said. So if you're going to pull one down, pull the other down, what is freedom of speech? Uh, so and that's just with, my honest opinion. With freedom of speech, I think, comes responsibility, too. You know, I'm all, I'm all for mm-hmm. freedom of speech. Say what you want. Say all the hateful things you want to say, but there's going to be consequences for that, that's a.k.a. Right. losing your Twitter, losing your job, losing the people you love. You know, like, people can say what they want, you know. And, you know, with Kanye being so in the public eye, not only being Kanye West, but then he opened up his audience by marrying uh, Kim Kardashian. That is a whole range of other people that are now having their eyes on you. And, like, with that comes responsibility. So if you're tweeting this foolishness, whether it's trolling or just to be joking or just to get a laugh or get a reaction, it has a much, much, much bigger impact. And I appreciate that Elon Musk, you know, took down his Twitter again because you can be an advocate all you want but in the end of the day we have to protect people and twitter is a really powerful platform um and (laughs) and and, you know especially when you have that many followers well i i guess my question is well what's the difference and you know i love having the debate uh, debate queen what's the (laughs) difference between him saying um insightful ignorant things and trump saying insightful ignorant things what's the difference he's black and he's white I'm just going to hit yeah. it right there. Yeah, what's the difference? And, and I, think, chase. I think it's a great point. <laughs> and let's make no mistake, the First Amendment says nothing about being able to tweet whatever you want. Right. right? The First Amendment means you can't get arrested for the things that you say or the beliefs that you hold. Right? Right. 
Um, but having said that, I, it is interesting that Elon Musk, you know, kind of positioned himself as that advocate for right. free speech to re-platform Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, OK, if you're going to back that up, um, being that kind of advocate means freedom for the thoughts that you hate. Right. right? That's what being American is supposed to be about. And even if it's the most disgusting, most vile things, like if that's the soapbox you're going to stand on, then stand on it. Yes. Right. Yes. And uh, he he's now he's all of a sudden picking it because now it's the bottom line. Now it's affecting his yes. pocketbook. Yes. Now he has to make decisions where when he was on the outside looking in, you could say, oh, well, What's why the did they suspend Donald Trump? This is ridiculous. This yeah. is America. And now that he's the guy in charge, all of a sudden, shoes on the other foot. Yes. And he's doing some of the things that he was very critical of. And, 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 and the reason I just, and I appreciate this dialogue, because I really want us to really think about and communicate how it, both of them, in my opinion, are just as toxic in their words, and both of them are just as irresponsible. So uh, I don't think if you're going to take one down, take the out. You can't have it both, both ways. But the Bible is very clear. The tongue, as small as it is, mm -hmm. creates fire that it goes ablaze. Yeah. And when you don't have Christ in you, it's really hard to control the your tongue. tongue. Oh, hey, see, <laughs> come on now. I, I know y'all hear that. That is uh, Miss Stephanie over here. Well, I haven't introduced him. I'm going to introduce him in a little bit, but I uh, heard you yield it over here. We're going to come back. Back, but y'all keep going because I'm gonna let the have their fun. Well, right before now. you take off, on this. Carter, I know I yeah. see. I was trying to get that. <laughs> I was trying. I was trying. <laughs> He's not gonna let you. He's not gonna let me here. Okay. I know. I know. Uh, when you of the world, uh, foolishness uh, fly. Foolishness can stand, mm -hmm. and that's what we're taking place today. Because we are in the world. Uh, the Bible tells us we will be in the world, but not be of the world. Mm -hmm. And so those that are of the world are able to speak those spew out all those nasty things that they're doing because the world accepting it. Mm -hmm. And so when we start speaking of peace and love and godliness and things of that nature, that sounds foolish mm -hmm. to the to the uh, to the worldly mind so and so that's why all these things are able to take place right now because we are in the world we're living in a place right now where satan is running rapidly mm -hmm. and he is just having a ball right now mm -hmm. yes, and is. anyone that 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 want to hear all that that's why everything on television all the foolishness that take place on vision is paying off mm -hmm. this is this is his time and he's doing his job, and it's up to us. It's up to you as the Christian, as the loving person, to to to, to knock out all that noise from inside of you, because mm -hmm. you can easily become a part of the same thing. those very things. Amen. Amen. But I think you also should uh, you should also have a voice for what is wrong too. So mm -hmm. I think just like uh, the team brought this topic up, I think it it opens up a great dialogue that mm -hmm. we can all think about. You know, uh, what really says what's right, what's wrong. If you're going to go there and you're going to stand on uh, freedom of speech, then you stand on freedom of speech uh, for all, not just for some. And it's, it's one thing to say what's wrong, but it's a whole nother thing to say what's right. And so we we hear a lot about what's wrong. They, they, they shouldn't do this. They shouldn't do that. But nobody's speaking on what should be taking place what's right what should be happening right now and so all right, that's where right. i'm standing i on like that. that i like that mm -hmm. this was good dialogue thank mm -hmm. you for bringing that topic in mm -hmm. I, I we have another one that is showing up and abigail you have something else before we move this show yes. right along before we move on to our next segment we're, mm -hmm. we're going to introduce our riddle and we'll go to commercial and y'all get the answer i'll give you some, some time to ponder on that so our first riddle of day is I make a loud sound when I'm changing. When I do change, I get bigger, but I weigh less. What am I? Hmm. Can you repeat that? I make a loud sound when I'm changing. When I do change, I get bigger, but I weigh less. It's, oh. it's my favorite of all. Oh. <laughs> Can I answer now? No. Oh, come back. We'll come back. Oh, right. Respect the team. Oh, right. We'll give them some time. Man. Oh, oh. 
got it. I got it. If y'all have it, uh, because you see they got it here in the studio, I want to give our um, online opportunity. So we're going to go ahead and put it in in the comments. And if you can, when we come right back, are they going to win the day? You have some? I think we have them. I don't have one of those waffle makers today where they can make one of those. I have a waffle maker. Oh, I want it already. We have a waffle maker <laughs> that is going to, we're going to be giving away today. Uh, so we will, ask, we'll get your information. We'll make sure that we get it to you. A waffle maker. Mm -hmm. All right, a then. Waffle maker. Yes. All right. Well, you will be right back right with the back. answer that to that riddle. Repeat that riddle. I'll, one I'll one say it one more time. Yeah. I make a loud sound when I'm changing. Mm -hmm. When I do change, I get bigger, but way less. What am I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Simmer a waffle iron. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, we're back. We was over here doing <laughs> selfies and everything, and I was trying. They thought they were going to outdo us, so I tried to get mine in, and then Jacob and them just brought me right back in. But that's all right then. A lot goes on behind the scenes. All righty, we're excited. Okay, the riddle. We're all gonna, right, we are coming back with the answer to. Can you repeat it one more yes. time? Yes, I will repeat it one more time, and it is also on the screen. I make a loud sound when I'm changing. When I do change. I get bigger, but way less. What am I? And we do have somebody in the comments who got it right, but I want to give Yilda a chance to give her answer. It's my favorite snack of all Ooh, popcorn. Yes, ma'am. It is. Cassidy <laughs> Muhammad also got it right in the comments. So, Cassidy, please message us on Facebook. Well, actually, <laughs> well, actually to uh -oh. be very honest, I was actually going to say corn, change. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's when true. When I get bitter, bitter way less. Yeah, technically. Yes, yes I was going to, because technically, mm -hmm. so I have change, and then when it gets bigger, I get into dollars, right. and it weighs less. That makes sense to me. Mm, that makes sense? Uh -huh. I'm still with the problem. If it makes dollars, it makes sense. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you better do it. All righty then. Okay, so we're good to go. Ready to bring it on in. Well, yes. we, we're going to do the acronym. Uh, we're going to start the show. Before we start the show off, uh, Look, just to say he was speaking balloons. You know, uh, <laughs> that, that you know, that's a, a good guess. one too. That that's is another good answer. One. You know, uh, I just, I just love uh, our team, and I love the guests because you know we just come up with some crazy wild answers. And uh, that question that you had, that riddle that you had, could have really went three ways. It, yeah, it really could have. It really could have. I like the tricky ones like that. Because the other one was kind of easy. So I went with the hard one. Oh. But y'all are good. Oh, Our audience you. is good too. Because I maybe I'm not smart enough for these riddles. Because oh. they stump me every time. Okay, but give us one more. <laughs> one more? Give okay. us one more. <laughs> I can give so I didn't win. No. No, she won. That's what she won. I mean, you won. You won. But you didn't win. We're going to give you a chance you get, again. Did he say I didn't win anything? Yeah. You got done. I got plenty around here. You won, but you didn't win anything. <laughs> We're going to give the in studio a chance to win this one. This one? Okay, yeah, we'll, give, we'll give y'all a chance first. This and one. they get a waffle, a waffle iron Cereal. as well. Oh. Oh, oh <laughs> third, give them third. Okay. <laughs> oh, what about the waffle mix? Yeah, yeah. get the waffle mix. Yeah. Mix. And I'm gonna go hang out with Cassidy and we're gonna put this thing together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. So this one, you, you don't gotta think too hard. What type of music do rabbits listen to? Ready, three, two, one. What type of music do rabbits this listen is what to? You get. Holy music. Oh they should. Because they live in holes, right? Oh, I like that. Oh, it's a good answer, though. That ain't the answer. <laughs> no, but it was good. good. It, was it good. looks like they're going to need some help from it the people out there on the, sure. uh, online. Can y'all please help them out? <laughs> they Let's see. We got some people in the thing. chat. Let's see if everybody's got it. Yep. Oh! Oh! got it again. Oh, bro, got it. Who was that? Kathy got it again. again. Cassidy, you can only Cassidy, win my one friend, time. win two waffle irons oh, if I can get one of them. Good <laughs> job, Cassidy! Good job. Excellent job. Okay, well, we're going to start at the top of the show up so we can go ahead and introduce the team uh, that are on. Get this conversation going. Yep, yes, so our acronym... Can't hear you, darling. Our acronym of the day is here. Um, so as you know, oops, sorry, wrong thing. Acronym of the day is 
you still have uh, Kanye up. Yeah, I'm trying to get it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. 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 A little bit. There we go. Okay. Cool. So, acronym of the day is here. Um, Hardship erodes, but really erases. Um, And that's a that's a shorter one. uh, Hardship erodes, but barely erases. Um, And I think that that is a good acronym for this topic today because we are talking about. Um, you know, a little bit of a heavier topic, kind of going over a couple different things, um, uh, overcoming abuse and to um, manage that and navigate that going forward in life. Um, and I definitely think this acronym represents that well, because hardship, you know, comes and goes, um, and it never goes away. It's always going to be there. It's kind of um, about how you manage it going forward. Um, so I'm really excited for today's topic, and I think hopefully we can help a lot of people today. Yes. Yeah, I think, I know we will help a lot of people today. It's going to be a great topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great show uh, with some great guests. I would like to go ahead and start with Miss Stephanie Jane Martin. Martino. Martino. Oh. Martino. Oh, okay. It's oh, a Italian. Oh, missing on. Oh. oh. Martino. <laughs> Martino. Okay. <laughs> Italian, right? Yes. Well, tell the people a little bit about yourself. I'm an advocate for sexual assault survivors. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been for the last 15 years. I'm a survivor myself of child sexual abuse and rape. Um, as I walked through my healing with the Lord, um, he really pressed upon me how I needed to reach other people. While I was going through my healing, I was so alone and as an advocate, I've learned that even though 25% of the women in the United States have been sexually assaulted, we all feel that loneliness. Oh. And um, the more I got into my healing, God kind of tapped me on my shoulder and says, you know, what I've taught you in your healing needs to go out. Everybody heals from things. And if we choose to heal with the Lord, he will redeem all that the, the locust has stolen from us. Oh. So, so it's a beautiful thing that, you know, it's hard to accept. I've been right. It's hard to accept our father was a terrible father. It's hard to accept when somebody's an alcoholic in the family, and that's what you have to deal with on a daily basis. But when we come to a place where we accept that, and we say that what God, or excuse me, what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. And when we turn to God continually, he helps us not only heal, but reach out to other people. Mm -hmm. And sharing our testimony is such an important part of our faith because when we see what God did in somebody else's life, you go, oh, great. Now I have greater faith that he can do that in me. So that's what I want to do. I just want people to know that you're not alone. And it's happened to so many of us. And when we come and we are open and say, you know what happened to me, then you're going to make relationships with people you never thought were possible. You know, um, you are a breath of fresh air. And uh, through this conversation, uh, there is, you know, God just doesn't make any mistakes. And you're going to find out why. Uh, he just blew my mind. Uh, I didn't know why he had me sit you next to me. Uh, but we're going to have that conversation and we're going to open all the way up. Awesome. So thank you and welcome. Thank you for having me. All righty. And then I have uh, <laughs> Nina Garcia. Hello. Tell the people a little bit about yourself. <laughs> What brought you? <clears throat> yes. So I am a licensed professional counselor. I'm a drama therapist. That's what I'm known for. Wow. Being a drama therapist and I'm an empowerment consultant. So what I primarily do is I help empower people to move beyond trauma. That is my jam. Mm-hmm. Uh, personal survivor, professionally trained to help people struggling with all different types of trauma to move forward and beyond. And I do that in a playful way. Everything I do is super confrontational, but it's done in such a playful way that we don't know that we're, you know, working through and healing some of the most difficult things that we have ever been through. Um, We're often doing it in creative ways and metaphorical ways. And I think just to to bounce off this, right, that testimony, that Mm -hmm. transparency is often used of like, Mm -hmm. it's still your truth, even if you feel that it is a truth that you want to hide, that you want to avoid, that you want to, that is, is ugly, quote unquote, whatever word you want. An ugly truth is still a truth. It's still and so how do we mm-hmm. own that truth? And is it, this is my story, actually, this doesn't belong to you. 
whoever you were that you thought you could cast this on me, that you thought you could put me down, that you thought you could cast me as this. That is not my story. Mm. This is my story. And so I help empower people to own their truth, you know, without oppressing themselves and also without feeling that need to oppress other people. Oh, so so I'm more I could say, oh, but, but that's what yeah. I do in a nutshell. Oh, we're getting y'all ready. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, she was on the show, Nina was on before, and she brought such a powerful voice mm -hmm. uh, that I knew that I had to have her back again. And I probably drove uh, Abigail crazy because I kept saying to her, I need you to get in touch with Nina. <laughs> and Nina isn't the easiest person <laughs> to get in touch True with. I, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I know Abigail wanted to throw her towel in. It's like, who is this woman? Because she didn't have the pleasure of meeting and knowing you, but uh, I told her, just trust me. I just get it. So thank you. Thank you. And Abigail, thank you for not uh, setting my hair on fire. <laughs> the real world fire. And thank you obedient. both for your grace. I know. It's your hand in so many cookie jars near yes. the end of the year. Thank you so your, for your grace yeah, so we can get you today. I want to be here. I'm happy to be oh, here. Oh, thank you. I'm wonderfully <laughs> happy to have you here. And then, of course, Lakeithia yielded. Uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what can I say about this woman here? I don't have to speak for her. I'll let her speak for herself. Go ahead. Tell the people who you are. Um, well, how I, did you get here? I'll just simply say that I am a yielded vessel unto the Lord. Um, I am one of God's favorite patchworks. And I say that because <laughs> God has pieced and quilted, quilted me together um, from the various places of trauma and tragedy. Tra Tragedy, as well as uh, the triumphs and the victories in my life. And so I use um, all of that to love on God's people and to bring them from a place from where they are to where, you know, God would have them be. And I get that mantra from a, you know, former ministry that I was a part of, but it's definitely what God would have us be. And um, as my sister said over here, you know, it's our testimonies. And so I have kind of position myself to to just walk out that scripture that people are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And so I use my testimony, any part of the quilt that's needed at that particular time, we have to be all things for all people. And so there's different corners on this quilt and there's different pieces on this quilt. And uh, I'm one of his favorite pets. And you know Love what? Uh, I saying the quilt, it brings me back to my grandmother, mm -hmm. my father's mother, which used to hand make quilts back in and she, I remember as a little girl, we would have to cut up these pieces of fabric, and some of the some of the pieces would be very, very pretty, and some of them were just like ugly, and they would be from either from her aprons or old dresses. Or, but always, uh, mom, we called her mama. Though, she, mom, have to cut up these ugly pieces, and she would respond back and say, "But you put them together, and they're beautiful." And she said, watch when I finish. It's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so uh, listening to you saying a patchwork, um, that patchwork quilt that she used to make. Uh, oh, yeah. God has definitely pieced me together. Uh, so welcome, 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 welcome. Like Brother Carter. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Brother Carter? Well, you sounded more and more like me. Oh, oh I don't know. I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> well, I'm excited. As you guys can see, we have three phenomenal women on panel today. Uh, I'm just going to step back and let the Lord do what he has to do. Uh, on this show, we just kind of throw out a couple of, this is the candid conversation. So <laughs> when we have candid conversation, our conversation is authentic, it's truthful, uh, coded, and we don't make anybody uncomfortable. If you've accepted to come on here, it's not a shock job. So we're not going to do anything that's going to force you out. But uh, we would hope that you want to help someone else. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off this conversation uh, with a quick question. And anyone can jump in. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think I'm going to throw this ball, this first question. What has been your experience with abuse? whether sexual, physical, or emotional. I think I'm going to throw this question to my <laughs> left. All right. <laughs> and Stephanie, if you can, can you share? Um, honestly, 
I have endured every form of abuse there is. Um, and I lead in the Dallas area a Bible study called Many in the Souls, and it's specifically designed for people healing from trauma. And I've done this a countless times, and each time going through it, I just recognize, oh my. I've had to endure that. I've had to endure that. The hardest thing for me, I love my mother. Love my mother. She lives 15 minutes from me. Love her. Um, she was a raging alcoholic growing up, and she always brought abusive men into our home. And um, when I got to the whole neglect part, I was like, oh, you mean my mama was abusing me by neglecting me? So for me, that was one of the hardest no, you know, not the sexual abuse, not the physical abuse, not the emotional abuse. It was waking up and realizing that my, and I'm in my late thirties when I really recognize that my mother was neglecting me and that's a form of abuse. I think when we grow up in abuse and everybody's abusive, especially as a child, you don't know what's, you know, really going on. Um, it's easy to just kind of gloss over what's what's happened. And as a kid, you be positive. You don't want to think of things because about you your parents. Because you don't want to bring, exactly, you, you want to bring in, you don't bring attention to something that is, yeah. appears to be normal. Exactly. For you. Yeah. So, um, you know, but in, in the end, um, it was me that ended up abusing my the most. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's what really was, you know, I was very suicidal. I had the worst thoughts going through my, my head idea. See, I grew up in church. The Bible said, I knew for God so the world, but did that mean me? me? Oh my me? God. Wait a minute. Oh Wait a minute. Oh I don't know if he means me, there was a point I, in time I, I, where God I, said, I wanna, it is you. Can I stop right there? Yes, you can, because I talk. Said the, <laughs> no, you said something, and I, and I want everyone to feel like you can jump in. But you said something that just resonated with me. Mm -hmm. You said you grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. You knew the word, mm -hmm. but you did more damage to yourself. Mm -hmm. Knowing the word, knowing God, having a relationship, understanding. I just want on that mm -hmm. and um i think what she's saying is that she going through the abuse and all the stuff okay. she was going through it was uh it was difficult for her to see that god god loved her as well when he said go and it was difficult to see because she was going through so much at, mm -hmm. but it took some growing up since some, no, some, no, I heard yeah. what she was saying, I, but I want us to really ponder on the fact that the word was in her, mm -hmm. you know, the word was there. She knew the word, but when you are hurting, that word for me, because I've, I've been there, mm -hmm. that word, even though it's in me, mm -hmm. that pain is so much more, um, I, I don't even know how to intense. Yes. That the, what's in you. That goodness mm -hmm. that's in you, you can't even feel it. At least yep. I couldn't yep. because the pain was so deep. Um, why me was my favorite thing to yes. say to God. Yes. Why me? Yes. Why me? Yes. Why me? Mm -hmm. But now that I'm much mature, much more mature, I can mm -hmm. go. Um, I deal with women who've been sexually exploited. Mm. There is not a single story that they tell me that, I mean, I can just sit there and listen and not judge them. Mm -hmm. Nothing shocks me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do have stories that have been like, wow, mm -hmm. wow. I'm really sorry about that. Because God allowed me to go through so much, mm -hmm. I can minister to people and that I could not minister to women mm -hmm. had I not come through okay. what I had gone through. I'm going to throw this mm -hmm. over to Yield It. Uh, yield It, uh, you have to go ahead and uh, can you share a bit about your uh, I, I can throw it over to her because I know, know some of her stories in the home. Um, share? Yeah, oh, definitely. That's Hey, that's why we're here to share. But uh, uh, like yourself, I've kind of endured all, all of the abuse, uh, physical, um, definitely. And my child is calling me and making my phone fall. Um, <laughs> but uh, physical, uh, sexual, and then definitely emotional. Um, and the crazy part about it 
is it was an ongoing cycle. So mm -hmm. my abuse initially started as a child in my home with my mom. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have to say, you know, just for the sake of the listeners that really understand, I grew up in the trap. And for those of y'all that know, that is, that is the house that everybody partakes in, in drugs and sells drugs and does all of that kind of stuff. And Abigail just stood up. I don't know if I said the wrong thing, no. Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, um, kind of growing up in that environment, you know, all of the things that come along with that, uh, various people in and out of the house houses, lot, you know, all tonight, things of that nature. And I, I know everybody's probably thinking, okay, that's where the sexual abuse came in. That's not where it happened. The sexual abuse came much later in life when I married and married my mother, um, which was the exact same characteristics that I, I was used to. Um, and that normacy just did not normal for me. And, and so anything that was chaotic is what I cling to. And then having to basically um, endure being Forced into sexual acts with my husband, who was addicted to crack cocaine at the time. No. So, um, so I've definitely endured all of it. And again, those are the pieces of this quilt that kind of mm -hmm. make me, you know, ugly so. in some spots and beautiful in other spots, and just have you no know, uh, a lot to share. Mm -hmm. So, um, is that all you? Want? That, that, okay. That, 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 that. <laughs> Now I'm gonna throw this over to Nina because this is this is gonna be heavy, but it's gonna be good. Uh, Nina, I know that a lot of people have come to you for um, counsel, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes our own journey mm -hmm. uh, when we're trying to help somebody else and we're in a place. Um, how are you able to counsel when you are dealing with some of your own? Yes. For some context, yes. Okay. We'll yes. give a little context over because Val knows uh -huh. what's going on. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> uh, I am presently going through a divorce that, that I started and reached out and originally said back in May of 2021. We're in 2022, y'all, right? Yes. Okay, it's been a process. Yes. Of 2021 <laughs> that I... Uh, originally had said, you know, I believe I have thought about this. I have prayed about this. I have spoken with people. I have reached, I have gone into my therapeutic skills. And I, I really believe that this is the next step mm -hmm. that we need to move into a divorce. And I, I remember the moment I stood in a, it's going to get a little spiritual. I stood in a river mm -hmm. and I was struggling before I had made this decision. I was struggling. I was struggling. I was struggling. I stood in a river and I looked out and there was nothing in front of me except the river and the, the trees. And I looked up and I was God, I gotta know because I feel like what I'm being told is like have faith in the marriage, have faith in the marriage, the institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm losing myself. I feel like I have lost myself with the, the emotional damage and, and neglect that I have experienced in this marriage. And the clear answer that I received back was you can lose yourself and stay. Or you can find yourself again and go. Oh, wow. 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 That's deep. That's mm -hmm. wow. Simple. Wow. And it was like, God is with you. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm very spiritual. I have all sorts of different beliefs mm -hmm. on here. But but that was clear as day. And that was when I was like, that's the faith. It's not faith in the institution of marriage. It's faith in what the journey holds. Right. And so... So I'm going through this divorce, right? And so this is what, what Val's referring to. Uh, we've got lies going on. We've got, uh, I mean, uh, bringing people into the home. When we have, I have said, just tell me, you're going to bring somebody to the home? Just tell me, why do you want to do that? Should I even go into that? Why Why is it important yes. that you yes. tell, right? If you're co-parenting out, you're trying to figure out separation or divorce, why is it important that you tell your partner or family system who else is in a home? Top three reasons. Top three reasons. <laughs> because if you're going to put child first, if you're going to put your child first and you are trying to break systems of oppression, if you are trying to break trauma that has been handed down to you and you want to do something better moving forward, tell people what is changing in the child's life so that you can catch a mood shift or a character shift in that child so that you can support the child first. <coughs> catch. Oh, God. Catch. You okay over there? Oh, you okay over there? Okay. Come on, come on. As if that weren't enough, catch the abuse 
sooner rather than later. We can't, we can't always stop abuse from happening, no matter how much of a helicopter parent you are. You cannot always be there 100% of the child. If something shifts, you're like, wow, I don't know why they shifted back in August of 2020. Oh, yeah? Who was in their life that was new and introduced to them? Can we check that out and next, explore? Right there is where I wanted to go because uh, <laughs> abuse happens in so many different facets. Mm-hmm. And this conversation mm-hmm. that we're going to have today, we're, we're not going to just talk about one type of abuse. Mm-hmm. Uh, as parents, sometimes we don't recognize the other. Mm-hmm. We're lying right at our children's feet. Mm-hmm. And that we are actually doing and how it actually is going to develop that child into a young adult, mm-hmm. into a young teen. So, uh, Abigail, she's raising her hand. I don't know how I'm going to get through this here today, y'all, because everybody wants something. So, Abigail. Um, I, I have a comment, a Facebook comment. Someone asked a question, sure. um, and this can kind of go to everybody. Um, how did you get out of your past traumas? Oh. That is kind of a heavy question. That's a, that's that's a it's a big question. question big but process. That's a big process. Yeah, but I it's think a huge that, process. <laughs> so I, if they can give us a little more content yeah. to that question, and then we can, because I think if we answer that question, it's going to be a little uh, general, and it sounds like someone needs to answer. I, I can play with that, actually. Oh, you actually can? Okay, so well, can ahead. you repeat that question? Though? Yeah, they said, how did you get out from your past traumas? Okay. I say I can play with that in a general way because I'm going to go into metaphor. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Go. So when I have clients, so when the, even to jump in that question, you just asked me, how do I keep going, right? Mm-hmm. Knowing I'm dealing with other people's traumas too, right? Mm-hmm. And I've got faith in the process, okay? It is a journey. Trust the process is the number one thing that I will tell a client. Trust the process. Mm. Right? And so when we got this question of how do you get through the trauma, one of the things that I will tell a client the very first day that they are with me and they look at me and they say, Nina, I know that I've got PTSD. I know that I've got trauma. And I know that I will never not have PTSD. I just want to know how to make it easier. And I say, whoa, can we take a breath? Actually, you can live without PTSD. Oh. You need skills. To know how to own that back as your story and not as something else that feels like it's still oppressing you. So the metaphor that I will offer people is this. I say at first when this thing happens to you, okay, it goes in four steps essentially, okay? Four steps. We imagine this out there. The very first thing is I say it's like a monster in the closet. You don't want to look at it. You don't want to see it. You don't want to hear it or close. We put it in another room. Let's avoid it at all costs. Okay? That's what trauma does. It says, avoid me. This is how I'm going to keep you safe from this ever happening again. But the thing is, avoiding it does not stop it from happening happening again you must go through it oh wow processing so so in other words yes you got to turn the light off (laughs) oh you're you're taking the words you got to turn the light light on you got to turn the light on and you got to really look at that thing you got to face it you got to look at it what you don't reveal all the time it ain't ain't gonna heal if you're not gonna accept it and look at it and take it to God. You yes. have to go through it. As you, I lo- it is a huge process. Uh, as you, it's a huge process. I wrote my book, Fear Not For You Are Redeemed. It's a 365 day devotional walking oh, people through their healing. While I was going through it, I mean, my sexual abuse started at the age of three. I, I want you to hold that for one yes, second. Ma'am. I got to pay a bill. <laughs> I, this here is getting so as y'all can see, I have three powerful women. And if I, I'm going to throw myself in here, and I'm going to throw Abigail in here, that means we got five powerful women and two men over there in the corner that are pretty too. But I, I got to pay a bill, and then we're going to come right back, and we're going to dig deeper. And I'm going to find a little more about fear or not, for you are redeemed. All right, Come on, then. come on, come on. Welcome, I, welcome back to the show with Val. Here's your host, Val. All righty then. Thank you, Brother Carl. I, you know, we want to get you in here. And he said, he said, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all, y'all can't see me. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. All right then. But before we uh, move on, uh, Nina had uh, three points. Three more points. Yeah. Three more points. Uh, we're gonna, and we're, that's the show. And we're, we're, uh, we're not going to let her get all three of it if they're long. <laughs> No, oh, this is the beauty of it. It's like an image, 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 image. Okay, I, well, I, I really need her because there are people that are listening that need this healing today. So we're going to bring it on in. Nina, come, go ahead. Yes, and give yes. Us a report. What I love about this and what, right, what 
It's this general thing is you could take this to your coach, to your counselor, to your, uh, to your pastor, whoever it is, you could take these images to and say, this is where I'm at and this is where I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is how, you know, you can move through this. This is why I like it so general. So that first was monster in the closet. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've got to keep what the words I use is shine a light on it. You got to keep shining a light on it. Then you realize, Oh wait, that's like a big old dust bunny. And that's like a huge, right? But it's not a monster in the corner. What happened was dangerous. Mm -hmm. What's happening to you now is just really, really scary, terrifying even. But if you are no longer in that space anymore, you're not in danger anymore. You can handle this. Oh. You're strong enough for this. So we go through the monster in the closet and they're like, oh, wow, me, you know, I shined the light on it enough. You know, now it's more like an elephant in the room, mm -hmm. right? I want to talk about it. I want to do these things, right? But it's like, I feel like every Everybody can see it on me comfortable. Yeah. It's like, right. It's an elephant in the room stage. You keep shining a light on that elephant in the room. What does it become? It's like a to-do list. It's not as dysfunctional in your life, but it's just it's right there in your brain. You know, it's brain. there still, right? If you're thinking about it, little things bringing up. It's that to-do list. It's on the to-do list. Now, a lot of people will get to the to-do list stage and they will say, I don't really need to work on it anymore, right? I, I'm okay, right? I can function. I can go back to work. I can, like, no, 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 keep going, keep going, because I promise you there's one more stage. And this is when it's just like the air you breathe. Mm. It's just something that happened. It was foul air at one point, but now this is yours. It's just, you can go on existing in life and it does not affect your life dysfunctionally the way that it once upon a time did. Mm. Those, that's four stages. Like it. Wow. I like it. Wow. So Nina, could you, could you describe this light keep shining upon it? Okay. Oh. okay. Do we want to go there now? It's Please the leaning in. I got a whole different thing for that. Okay. <laughs> well, we could come back to that later no, too. Yes, I mean, the short, the short version. What is what is this light yes. that you're shining on? No, seriously. So when you think about this, the light that you're shining right now, I would say there's a lot of different ways you can shine a light, right? So in the ways that you can lean into this, we actually talked about this on the last show. And you were like, Nanina, what are those stages? You said uh -huh. the stage amount, right? Uh -huh. it, very simply, if we want to go into it more later, very simply we can. The five ways that I say, hey, from the least public to the most public, right? Uh -huh. So this would be from the most private. The most intimate with you to the most in five stages. You ready? I'm gonna knock them out. Okay. Stage one. Again, this is most private. This is you are actually able to admit to yourself that that happened. It's uh -huh. private. You can journal about it. You think about it. You're not avoiding. It. You think about it. You journal about it. But nobody else even has to know. That's stage one. Stage two. I want to keep shining a light on this thing. I want to lean into this a little bit more. Okay. Great. Now you're gonna do this with someone who you trust, who you feel very safe with. Maybe it's a therapist. Maybe it's your mother. Maybe it's just somebody you really, really trust. Whoever that is to you. Only you get to identify and decide that, right? So after that, you know what, Nina? I've been leaning into this with them. I feel safe enough to actually share it beyond myself with somebody who I already trust. Now I want a parallel experience with someone. This is stage three. This is, I know that I can go into a group with people who've experienced this. Or if somebody brings this up and I'm in a group and I don't expect it, I can talk with them because I know, oh, we have a shared experience here. That's how, you know, oh, level three, I'm able to lean to this and shine a light on it. What's after that? that you say you know what i can talk about this publicly you know when it comes up i could even say this to a stranger if they're like oh you've been through that you say yeah i have right now maybe you don't want to like talk extensively about it but you can't own it and it doesn't disrupt and cause dysfunction in your life right that's a four okay mm -hmm. five the most public and advocate everybody here stage five right? yeah. and when it comes <laughs> right. to you've in, there is nothing more public than saying i want you to talk about it too and advocate and right, right, right? Right, right. So that's what i say that shining that light there's so many ways so that shining that light is mm -hmm. what i'm hearing in the simple terms is uh recognizing the issue first mm -hmm. and then being able to just di uh, talk about it. Well, well I, not necessarily you know, recognize. Go ahead. You know. I, I was going to say totally, and this is definitely no, no punch at you or anything. Okay. I totally agree with all your steps and all of those things, but coming the walk that I come from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those, and, and again, this is kind of some after steps where, where Nina is get, oh, getting the help and the therapy or whatever. Therapy. But in, in, in my life, mm -hmm. in my walk with all of those things, one, two, three, four, and five is an impossible feat for me. I can't get to two because I can't even breathe to get up the next day oh. to get to the, 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 you know, the path of my day. And so I would answer the question initially that Abigail read, uh, how do you get over this? How do you get through this? Simply put, get you some fighting tools. Oh. Um, whatever those fighting tools look for, look like. I initially, and, and I say fight because again, that's the walk that I came from. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got to give it to your gutter. Yeah. From the gutter, most the, the hey, from the yeah, I gotta That's give it to you from yeah, that yeah. point because again, I came from the track. Some steps, man, listen, I'd be mauled before step one even came to a reality. Mm -hmm. So, I say this to say that whatever your fighting tools look like are going to be totally different in every situation. Um, as as Nina has so eloquently described, it's it's, it's a step, it's a process, whichever mm -hmm. your process looks like. And so my fighting tools initially were physical fighting. I'm not advocating fighting. I'm not advocating danger, but it was a survival technique at 
that particular point. And so I that in to say, whatever it looks like, you have to know what to fight with. Oh. And so you have to, to acquire those, those skill sets based on the trauma of the tragedy that's happening right there, right there for you. So, I mean, you know, man, you got to get the tools to fight with. And I traded in my fist for my word, oh, but man. I had to, I had to get to that place. Mm -hmm. And so to, to tell me, you know, uh, all things work for the good. Those, it, I don't want to hear that right now no. because right now I can't <laughs> breathe right now. I, I I'm faced with the fact that this man is about to return home from a five to four day drug binge. And I got to physically fight right. to, mm -hmm. to keep Save my, my sanity. Life. So, you know, yeah, it's a monster coming in and I'm getting ready to beat the hell out of it. And I just got to be honest because it's either it's fight or flight. And I mean, go. I'm going to give it to you. This is candid conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to give it to you. You know, one and two ain't getting ready to help when you got somebody that's been out binging mm -hmm. on drugs for four to five days. You don't know what that monster looks like when it comes in. And so um, I sum all that up to say that you have to find the tools that are, uh, uh, are essential for your current situation. Mm -hmm. Definitely seek out, definitely look for different people. And my prayer is that you would eventually seek out God. And I say eventually, because sometimes that hasn't been the basis. That hasn't been your foundation. Well, you know, it's so funny. And I don't, I, 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 I'm, I'm coming to you. Oh, I know, I was jump in. Oh, <laughs> she was there, she was there. I'm, 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 I'm with you on that, because if I, if I go back to my abuse day, that mm -hmm. moment of mm -hmm. my abuse, um, I didn't have, all I could do was try to figure out a way to save my life. Mm -hmm. you You're know? in survival so mode. That's that different, that danger yeah. versus scary, I, right? Exactly. My steps only work if you in scary territory. in dangerous territory, yes. it can't yeah, it count. Can. No. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, no. that, that was, that's the that healing. Is, yes. Right? Yeah, that's, How that's do you heal it. after you're out of danger? Then you just deal with yeah, the scary stuff. Right. right. That particular day, if I, if I go back to that day, mm -hmm. it was probably the single most scariest, uh, the darkest day of my life. Mm -hmm. Now, did I ever go back to the dark moments and dark day again? Yes, in my head. Mm -hmm. right. But mm -hmm. that day was so dark because I really felt like my life was over. Mm -hmm. uh, if I fought too hard, they could have killed me. Mm -hmm. uh, if I resisted, they could have killed me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if I had to give anything to someone that's listening that have went through it, only you, mm -hmm. uh, what you can do in that particular danger moment yes. to save your life. Right. Uh, both of these ladies have said something that is so true. In the moment, uh, Yielded was a fighter. Mm -hmm. In the healing, what Nina was sharing in the process of going through the healing mm -hmm. process and that's that first day of, of speaking on it opening up and mm -hmm. talking turning the light on that's once you get out of the dangerous place yeah. uh, but you ha I would have to say to anyone that is in it if you're in it right now and live um, a way to save your life mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and only you know because you're in that situation mm -hmm. right now if you're in that situation right, right now mm -hmm. come up with a save your life figure and out where safety is, is mm -hmm. and then we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get through the others i'm going to turn it over to you uh stephanie who is hanging here yeah by three and she's ready to go in <laughs> she, 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 i know ready. she's ready to go if you can stephanie, go ahead. so for me um fear was a huge thing for me i was like i said i was three years old when sexual abuse started um, I remember still to this day when I was two years old, my dad, watching my dad beat my mother so bad, she th thought she was going to die. It was the day that she finally, the night she finally had the strength to leave the marriage. Um, so I had, I mean, it, it was from the little itty bitty. When my brain was forming, I was living in fight or flight. Um, and so fear was just constant with me and everything I did as a child, I didn't want to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what does that look like for me? Sometimes I would rather take the physical abuse over the sexual abuse. So as a little child, I'm trying to figure out in my own brain how I can, oh, you wow. know, um, I was severely beaten for at the age of four for having um my stepfather had slipped in the shower after I had gotten out and I was required to wash my hair myself. 
And apparently I dropped conditioner in the bottom of the tub and he slipped and he went around the the entire house and to find out who I was the youngest. And so I had to decide what kind of abuse I wanted. Um, That was just for a child that young to go through. Mm -hmm. So I was trained to live in fear. Mm -hmm. And when I came to the Lord and said, okay, this is what the word says, 365 times, fear not, fear not, fear not. You're not excluding people who grew up in abuse. You're not excluding women that have to deal with drunk husbands on a daily basis. You're not excluding people that go through, some people can't even imagine a moment in my childhood, in my first 17 years of life. And it was a moment. It was moments built upon moments, built upon moments. Mm-hmm. But when we turn to God and we say, okay, let's let's look at my fear, God. How can I get to the bottom of this? How can I be courageous for Christ? Because that's what you want me to do. Mm-hmm. He says, you got to work with me. You got to work. You got to <laughs> go through the pro- process. It is a process. It doesn't matter which process you go through. It's a process. Definitely. And when we go to the Lord, it says that perfect love will cast out all fear. Okay. Oh, yeah. Gotta go, Val. Uh, Tell okay. me, girl. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I have to, and, 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 and Lord knows I want everybody to understand this for me. God is the head of my life. Mm-hmm. I love him and he loves me back even. I could never love him more than he loves me. But when a person is in that state, Mm -hmm. and going through as you said earlier and as we know you don't see god god is the furthest thing he's the furthest thing away and so i really have to always make us it because when we've been when we've come out of it Mm -hmm. we want everybody to get this way Mm -hmm. but someone that's already in it that's going through it they don't have that connection and so when someone's saying to them about the word, the scriptures, yes, the word shall never return void. Mm-hmm. It won't. I get it. But what they need, and I believe and you can help me out on that, they baby. Mm-hmm. Do you think as a child, someone giving you a scripture is going to make you feel safer? No. Okay. What did you want as a child to help you? As a child, I did believe. Leave. So what's very interesting, like I started reading my Bible when I was 12 years old, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. I walked into my church and said, I read the whole thing. I was all mad. I read the whole thing. I need to be saved. And it doesn't tell me how to be saved. Uh, this is ridiculous. Because you read, you read a book. It was just a book. I read the book and I knew I needed to be saved, but I didn't know how to do it. So I did. It was October 23rd, 1991. And I prayed to receive Christ. The word does not ever return void. When we go to God and we say, you know, I know this isn't what you want for me. I knew that God no, didn't no, want no, abuse you're not for me. No, 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 my question. Well, no, I'm telling you what. God <laughs> called me young. No, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm not saying that. And this mm-hmm. is not a debate. No. I don't want nobody to feel this. I want you, to, I want you guys to think about this. Uh-huh. When you were in the midst, I'll put myself there. Mm-hmm. I'm in the midst of being raped mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. the word or someone speaking the word to me was not even there oh no you get what i'm saying yeah i just mm-hmm. wanted to live now i'm not saying he wasn't there right he was there oh yeah. that's why i'm still here right but for me and what i was going i didn't see it so i right. guess what i want us to really think about and then we're going to get to the other side of connecting with God and, and, and really finding that relationship. But I want us to think about that person that could be listening, mm-hmm. uh, that is there, that doesn't know the word, uh, doesn't know. They just feel lost, scared. Mm-hmm. They don't know what to do. Just now, we got some questions. Yes, we have a question for you specifically, Stephanie, um, from somebody named Nicholas Morton on Facebook. Uh-huh. Um, they said, do you face mental breakdown during your child? for this abusive situation. Another question um, that I will read off while I'm reading off questions. Said, uh, S- Selen Tujin said, um, how old were you when you learned that these, uh, that this is abusive? Like that you actually learned that it wasn't like, like the normal? Um, 
Honestly, I was in junior high school being raped by Mr. Popularity. And that kind of when the bells, literally, that's literally when the bells went off. Um, this shouldn't be happening. And oh my goodness, this is how I was raised. Uh -huh. And um, so it was kind of an interesting moment when things started to go, mm, no, this is not normal. This is not normal. Um after that had happened, I became extremely suicidal. When I tell you there's no reason that I should be sitting here other than the mercy of God. You know, I used to literally take a, um, a uh, syringe and put air into my system. Anybody will tell you that will kill you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, not a single time did that ever harm me. Um, I've collected pills for three months. I was, you know, I'm a singer. So everybody wants a singer to come over and, oh, they're the life of the party. And nobody expects Stephanie to go into your cabinetry and steal your pills. I didn't know what I was stealing, but I was stealing your pills. And I wouldn't steal like your whole <laughs> bottle because you're fighting against me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yes. Yeah. So I did that for about three months and I had over 300 pills. And I sat down and I'll tell you what, I met God that night. I sure did. And God had a purpose for me. Yes, I've been in a place where all I could see is pain. Yes, I've been in a place where life was so dark. I was constantly in survival mode, constantly in survival mode. But God is a God who seeks after yes. us. And that's it right there. Mm. That's it right there. So he sought after me, even in my darkest moments. Exactly. But when you're going through something and while you're in the midst of it, you still feel like there's, but God is not going to yeah. leave. Why me? Why, Why me? me? Why, Why me? me? Why me? Why I, I got to do this? I'm going to throw something out there for you. <laughs> um, how did, um, actually, I'm going to ask this question. How, how did this experience affect your dating relationship? Uh, wow. And I'm going to throw this right at Miss Yielded. So, um, I knew you was coming. <laughs> uh, I would have to be honest with you, um, taking it even back to my childhood, living in the um, drug infested house that I lived in. I was never, I never really felt safe. Um, and, and we out here now. So, you know, if anybody listening, y'all tell mama or whatever, um, you know, living in that type of environment where any and everybody is in and out of the house. Sometimes there was light sometimes there was water sometimes there was none of the above mm -hmm. um and across the street we just lived in a bad neighborhood across the street was a gambling shack right. y'all yeah, know what that is mm -hmm. maybe not that's where everybody go and gamble they right. shooting dice they playing cards they doing all kinds of stuff um and you know bullets, some, all of that mm -hmm. and and there were different people in and out of there and there was a particular um young man guy rest so um, who saw some of the stuff because not only was he across the street gambling, also supplying our house mm -hmm. with the drugs and he saw and knew what was going on in there and he would come in. I didn't have to sneak him in or anything. But I went to the front door, opened the door and let him in and I snuck him in. Not in everybody was like, oh, you was, you was, you was fast tail little girl. No, he has a security blanket mm -hmm. for me. And so, um, would come in and, and sleep on my floor with guns and because we knew and of course one night somebody did actually try to draw the door and come in and of course he opened the door and stuck the gun in the face and said if anybody ever comes to this door let them know that this is what's going to happen you know mm -hmm. and so I, I bring all of that in to give you the insight of how I've always felt like I needed security mm -hmm. in a relationship um I needed that covering I needed that protection I needed that and so um in that sometimes you know it's like oh every every girl wants a thug well for me, it took that thug life to feel, you know, protected, to feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, not that I the thug. I just needed to feel safe and protected. Mm -hmm. And when you look at me, you know, they let the dimples fool them. They let the light skin fool them. You know, usually those are the nice, prim, proper girls. But I'm a whole thug out here in these yeah. streets. <laughs> and I had to be a whole thug out here in these streets because of the life that I live. So I am a product of my environment. Mm -hmm. So when you see me sitting here speaking the way I speak and doing the things I do, this is all learned behavior, y'all. Yes. And if you rub me the wrong way, Nina, it might rub off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might act another way. And so, and so, so, you know, don't, don't, don't get too close. <laughs> um, so to, to, to get directly to the question, I needed the security. I needed um, that somebody that was going to provide me with that safe place regardless. And so it kind of took me to 
older men. And then, you know, even at the age of 14, I ended up living out by myself mm -hmm. because I, I, I then went to live with my sister who was in an abusive relationship. Her dude was beating her and I was beating him. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people just not going to tolerate you coming in the house That's fighting right. him. Yeah. So, you know, you got to go. It's either you. And so having to live on my own at such an early age brought me to a place that and, and having to be an adult brought me to a place of survival. And so it was either you benefit me or you go bye bye. Mm. So um, it came to the point that there was. I'm going to use what it is in today's term. Yeah. Sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Don't, okay. Donations. Um, okay. You know, I, I need, I have a need and you need to meet the need. And I'm not talking about sexual anything. I'm talking about bills because I'm a kid mm -hmm. and I got a house. So you want to come over here talking about, let's go to the movie for what? I don't want to watch no movie. Mm -hmm. I got to pay gotta bills. Pay yeah. My, so, my so my life, um, kind of went into a whole pack of criminal activity um, just to survive. Mm -hmm. And so my dating was who could benefit me the most. Okay, so if I'm going to sell a little weed, I need somebody that know how to sell weed. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm going to do this, I need somebody that know how to do that. So it wasn't really dating for me. It was fulfilling the need. I have to be mm -hmm. open and honest mm -hmm. with you. I think even after being married and divorced twice, I'm just not learning how to date. Mm -hmm. well, you know, uh, see, that's... But that quilt, that quilt and all those patches are still part of who you are, you know? Yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't, you don't lose those patches. Oh, no, they can you know, one of the things that I love about this, uh, the ladies on the panel today is that everybody is being authentically true because they really want to help mm -hmm. someone. And the only way you can help someone is really telling your truth mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. your story. Just put that on the screen. So, Speak um, your truth. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Speak so your truth. I'm true. You went through a test and you're giving your money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. There's a lot of money in that test. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I think about you said something that is still it's ringing in my ear right now. It's the security. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you have been so violated mm -hmm. and you've been through abuse for so long that it really does shape how you see a relationship, mm -hmm. what you want in a relationship, mm -hmm. what your expectations are mm -hmm. for any type of relationship. And can I mm -hmm. can I say this? Mm -hmm. In my first marriage, I would say my first marriage. Um, was probably, Hey Shannon, if you're listening, I know your wife on here. I saw, <laughs> um, but my first marriage was the ideal marriage. He was a provider. He was a good man. He was, um, you know, he was everything. He went to work two, three jobs, did everything, never raised his voice at me. I don't think he's raised at me to this day. And I've followed him and everything, but <laughs> I say that to say, because there was a lack of security mm -hmm. that I needed in, in that. So if your grandmother can come to my house and tell me, Oh, he don't want to eat that food you cook. Or you ain't good enough to be with him. You weren't protecting me. And so it was that simple of a thing mm -hmm. that caused me to walk out of a good marriage. And I ain't have foundation in God either. So I ain't have no commitment to no vows or God. At that well, point, the, I'm gone. And, 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 and I appreciate you in there because that's what I'm, oh, I'm going down this road of relationships. Mm -hmm. Because we still experience those triggers. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Um, yep. Because and we're still needing to make sure that that security mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I think about bringing me to a situation with my husband. Um, I'm I very, didn't do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, very, uh, I'm always, did you have my back? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, something that may be simple and one will probably say, well, why is she getting up over that? Because it takes me to a place That's it. of not being feeling mm -hmm. secure, mm -hmm. and so um, it's like when Grandma want to put okra in your gumbo and don't want to. Yeah, uh, bring that. See, see y'all. You know what my oh. husband does. So he was. Let me tell y'all. He, <laughs> he bring the private fights. Uh -oh. you know, uh -oh. what, what he's doing, and actually, it was true. I was my son. Our oldest son was going off to the military. Uh, going to the Marine Corps. And so we had did this whole, I made gumbo, I was making gumbo. And his uh, grandmother and his aunt and his mom, and it all came down. And they put okra in their gumbo. I like a little okra, but not like they like okra. So if my gumbo is my gumbo, I was almost through making gumbo. His grandma walks in the house with a Ziploc bag. Uh-oh. Of full of okra. Full of okra, not cooked. Not done. She went to my pot, opened my pot, and was getting ready to pour it. I said, "Up, oh. well, y'all already know how that happened." I, you walked in my house, walked to in my, my kitchen, in my kitchen. Boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. So, so, uh, Grandma didn't so, have. 
Grandma, you have to catch hands. <laughs> you better try Jesus. <laughs> Let's <laughs> let's speak of that security he's talking about. That's why I brought that up because I should have I should have intervened at that point mm. and did something concerning that, and I didn't have her back. And that's what she's speaking of yes. about. The, oh, oh yeah, them, so and, and I, but I took care. Business. But I took care. <laughs> did, the, did the okra go in the pot? The okra did not go in the pot no. because all right. I went into survival mode, mm. and that's what I and I brought. Yeah. I'm saying all, all that to say that things will trigger you, mm -hmm. and you think that it's been dealt with. Yeah, and when you have been through that abuse mm -hmm. and uh, in a in a relationship mm -hmm. or dating, certain things that will happen to make them feel insecure, yeah, mm -hmm. will come back up. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure. And since we have the counselors, oh, well, I'm waiting to hear what she's going to say. How do we trigger <laughs> those triggers? I mean, so what we're talking about is like what our brain does for our survival, right? Mm -hmm. And so y'all come from a very educational space right now, just a heads up, okay? Mm -hmm. So the brain is designed to protect us at all costs, at every cost. We're talking about I'm in survival mode. I became suicidal. I write all the things, all of that is still survival based. Uh, gosh, the, the things I could say on just the suicidal part alone is like, so I'm going I'm to try to give this in a nutshell version <laughs> of how, how did, right? If you were in session with me. So the brain is again designed to, it works on perceived threat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it is up to our experience of the world to then decide, is this Real? potential, right? Right. Is this like, I'm thinking it could be so, or is this a threat right now? I need to do something right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it works on perceived threat, but it's not saying, oh, this is a perceived threat. And this is, a, it's like threat, threat. threat. Yes. Alarm yes. systems are going yes. off. Threat. <laughs> threat. <laughs> Exactly, right? And so imagine you have a threat or an alarm go off when you're three, five, seven, whatever, right? Younger or even 20, 30, it doesn't matter. When that alarm system goes off, if you have not found a way to completely engage embodied safety, yes. mm -hmm. that alarm system keeps going off. It will go off the rest of your life yes. if you never address it. Yeah. One of the things I hear what you're saying there. One of the things that I had to start doing for myself mm -hmm. and that really helped me is I had to move out of expecting someone else to save me. Mm -hmm. And I had to go into this place of taking full control of my own life. Mm -hmm. I'm out of oh, that yes. danger. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to what's going on. Oh, yes. right, now, definitely. it doesn't mean that those triggers don't come up. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I breathe in. I may, and that. I come back. Yeah, I, 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 I breathe. Like I come back. You know, I think that's really hard for people, though. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I'm healed. And they're like, and have a trigger. Surprise. And then, and then they go right back into this tailspin. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. And, you and, and you said it's, something key right there. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people. people. And I think that's where we got a period mm -hmm. and go to what the real foundation is. And I know we're going to get to the foundation and premise of God, mm -hmm. but until you get to that point, but when you yep. get to that point, yeah. Again, you know, I love you. When you're, when you're completely healed, a trigger is, is a non-entity. Mm -hmm. It does. It doesn't happen. Right. It, it's your. Your. You should not have. If you're still triggered, that means there's still a sore there that the scab got knocked off of. Yeah. I'm gonna put back on that. Okay. If we're in a place, I'm a, I'm a, if a place like for me, I had complete and total amnesia before the belt. Mm -hmm. yep. And so for me, God gave me my memories back in my late twenties, mm -hmm. and there's still days now where I'm like, oh my. <sighs> That's so, what I'm saying. So yeah. there's a place where. When you've endured so much, allows us to heal when we're ready to heal. Yes, definitely. So we, so some people like with the women I deal with, because use is so strong, so deep, mm -hmm. they get upset. They're like, "Well, I thought I was over all of this." Right. Yep. You know, so we have to give ourselves grace mm -hmm. and mercy to definitely. say, "You know, we are healing." Mm -hmm. I. It was hard for me to accept that because of my abuse being so deep. It's it's going to take me until I walk into heaven to be completely and totally healed. Mm. And, and, and so I, before you kick me, I, 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 I see your foot coming up on top of this table. Okay. Okay, this. Now, this? When, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I say healed, that's past him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Healing is a present participle, which means perpetual state. Mm -hmm. So you're continuously healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when I say trigger, yes, there may be a trigger. But if it causes an emotional whirlwind turbulence, then that is not a healed place. That's still a healing place. Mm -hmm. So when that trigger comes up mm -hmm. and if it causes you to 
say, oh, Nina, I remember so and so, then this and this and this, but you're able to progress, move forward in whatever the conversation or the situation is, then that's a healed place. But if it causes you a setback, you start crying, you got to breathe. You got high. I'm talking about myself because I hide you. That is still an unhealed place. And I still got a lot of unhealed place. Okay. Mm -hmm. For me, I appreciate Amen. that. Yes. See, you finna kick I, me. I, Ricotta. Ricotta. Yes. Jesus, call him, call him. Ricotta. So what I'm saying here, I do believe, and again, I'm not the professional. I'm, I'm just the professional. I pay. That's it. Okay. Amen. Uh, I do believe that there is a healing process that mm -hmm. you go through. Mm -hmm. And the healing process has several different um, uh, phases. Fa that's a great mm -hmm. phase. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me, my healing process was I had to, that first journey was to get out of that, get into my safety place. Yes. Okay, I know yes. I'm no longer in danger. Mm -hmm. And I still use those tools and everything that I deal with. Okay, am I in a really dangerous situation? If I'm in a, something that I feel that is dangerous, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. threatening, I am going to kind of surveillance the room, figure out an exit plan. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm gonna, if I'm with my husband, I'm going to say, I don't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and usually we just kind of have this thing he knows when I'm not comfortable because those triggers are going to naturally come up. I Can I ever be healed from someone violating so... Uh, Deep. I, I say yes. Oh, yes. Okay. The Bible says. And oh, I, I'm gonna give you a clear. Word. I'm gonna give you a clear example of that. That answer being yes. When Stephanie first opened up her mouth and spoke of her abuse and all of this, mm -hmm. this spewed out of her mouth as if it never happened. You know, she she spoke of it with such confidence. Okay. With such, I don't want to. I said uh, I'm speaking my story. Hold on. I don't, I, don't, I, I wasn't there. finished. I'm gonna let you come back. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can I ever be healed of that? I say yes. I'm going to say that I was healed from the trauma of being raped. Mm -hmm. Can I say that I've been healed from all what the fallout of being raped? Because it's, being raped is not the only thing that happened to me mm -hmm. that night. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I was truly uh, violated in the worst way. Self-esteem, mm -hmm. uh, confidence, mm -hmm. uh, self-worth. A mm -hmm. lot of things goes along that. Oh, yep. my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I can say that I was healed from the things so much so that God has put me on a platform to give an open, honest, mm -hmm. and have an open, honest conversation with people mm -hmm. and women and men that they can talk. Now, the triggers that bother me is when someone tries to tell me how I'm feeling. Oh. Or how I feel. Yeah, yeah definitely. Especially yeah. when they have not. Definitely. definitely. That mm -hmm. trigger oh, yes. is the question, can I ever get past? Because so, um, it's, uh, I, that's, that's a thing that a lot of people go through, right? That's kind oh, yeah. of normal right there. Mm -hmm. But uh, having said that, I, uh, no, I, I think you need to take no, a... I don't, you, I, so Val, I, I want to answer that question. Being yeah. clinician, clinician, I know I didn't tell y'all I come yeah. from trapostolic lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I, I am a nurse yes. and have been a nurse for twenty. I ain't gonna Some tell y'all. Y'all gonna be in my business <laughs> at that point. But I have, and so you know, psychology, all of that is yeah. part of the nursing curriculum. I, I get all of that. I understand all of that. But um, I became a nurse before. Before I became a, a devout Christian. Yes. And so when I say scientifically, they want to give you these parameters, guidelines as to when, how, and how it's going to work and all of that. But as a believer, mm -hmm. a blood wash, born again believer, I say to you, I stand flat footed while I'm sitting, but you understand mm -hmm. flat footed. And I look at you and I say, yes, you will be able to come overcome all of every aspect, every splinter, every layer of that onion. When you totally decide, as my sister said over here, when you just decide to surrender completely to God, and that is how yielded was formed because I gave up my trajectory for his and, and gave it up no matter what I thought my life should look like, no matter how I thought that I should have been a nurse walking down the hall of LBJ hospital shackled like a common criminal, no matter how I walked before my peers uh, on my way to uh, being incarcerated with uh, a, a death 
sentence mm -hmm. uh, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill mm -hmm. with no bail mm -hmm. I still had to reach into at that point I was saved mm -hmm. sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost but I still had to reach into my inner fight mm -hmm. to know that regardless of what this looks like God's got me mm -hmm. but I had to get to that place of foundation and then and God took me back to test me on it. And so when Brother Carter says that test with, you know, with the money, and now we've been given the money, I was, I, I had been delivered from those things, but got myself back into it by marrying the exact same thing and had to overcome those things again in order to sit here as a yielded vessel of the Lord to give somebody else the, the, the grit and grime of my life. And I know there's people on here listening and I know they're going to text me after this because they don't know this. Mm -hmm. But to give the grit and grime of my life to say to you and somebody else that's listening. Yeah, that happened to me, mm -hmm. but I, I got over it. And yes, I got past it. And yes, I got through it. Every part of it. Now, there are still some parts and pieces that's still there because I still, hey, I still got Peter in my spirit. I will cut you and cuss you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so, you know, I'm, I'm first cousins to Peter. But my point is this. It becomes a learned behavior and it's by the grace mm -hmm. of God. It is by, you know, everybody got this little thing. Holy Spirit, activate hope. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps us in that in that in that learned place. Yeah. So it's the Holy Spirit that's going to intervene when those feelings or those triggers pop up that wipes and snatches it from your mind before you react or respond to oh, it. To even yeah, one hundred percent. And so you finished it off with that. Yes, ma'am. Because it goes back to I. I go into this place mm -hmm. of okay. I'm not in danger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, it did. It hit me. That was a hit. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. But uh, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not in danger. Mm -hmm. Breathe. And I move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do think that you go. Go ahead. I see you want to. But just because in. you've been healed don't mean you're going to forget. Right. And yeah, so forget. Uh, you don't never forget. Mm -hmm. He didn't give you nope. a mind to forget things. Nope. But he give you the power, I believe, to to, to see those situations differently. Mm -hmm. They yes. don't they don't affect you as 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 effectively as they once did before you were healed yeah. of the situation. That's him keeping you human. Yeah. That's that thorn in your side. Yes. Because if you can walk day to day with nothing and nail on your whole spirit, then you die. Mm. Yes. Okay, the doors of the church. So now open. Well, we know, Amen. Now we're going to keep us. Maybe one. Well, I know. I know that uh, Brother Carter, my co-host, he is so wonderful. Thank you, baby. You're trying to get me to uh, take a commercial. Just pay take a, a pause. Bill. I know, and yeah. I have to because we got to keep this thing rolling. Uh, we're going to take a a, uh, a quick commercial, but before we go, I want to do a um, question that I want to leave out there for everybody or somebody to uh, answer around the table. Did how did, oh, Lord, this really got me messed up today. Oh, my God. Oh, breathe. That's it. Okay. Um, the question is on Facebook. Go ahead. Yeah. Good save. <laughs> we actually we have one from Facebook. Um, uh, Michael Smith asked, when you were in your healing process, what things help you most? Mm -hmm. I, I, and when we come back, Michael, I'm going to start off with that question because I'm still in my healing process mm -hmm. as uh, we all are because I don't again I do believe that you still when you've been through something traumatic mm -hmm. you still have a process until you close your eyes that you you're going through that process. exactly so we're going to take that break and we'll be right back opinions of others on the airways oh we are back Oh my God! Oh my God! God is in the house. Amen. I am just it's so hot in here. It is hot, it is hot in here. I got the Holy Spirit oh, fire going on over here. I am so grateful for uh, hot, this lady hot. today. Thank y'all so much. Yeah. I'm glad you said Holy Spirit. I had uh, what's that boy that rapper name? It's getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Brooke Carter came up. I think we cut from the same couple. <laughs> Y'all got a patchwork together. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have to remind on I show up. Wrong church, wrong church, wrong church. Yeah. I, I want to say to you ladies uh, that, and to the listeners out there, this show is, you know, I've said, you probably have heard me I say I like that fire. Lot. It is fire. Yeah, all right. I know you love that fire. I 
Yeah. What you did right there. Uh, you like that. That's I, the name of my show. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really do love this fire because uh, every Saturday, I never know what God is going to do and how he's going to mm -hmm. do it. But I never walk away from this show without getting something. Mm -hmm. And today, he just done came up in here and just done shook up the table. He shook the table. That's what he does. Uh, and he, he shook the table so much so that he is truly, he truly has me vulnerable today uh so much so that i can't even control it and so i'm thankful for the ladies that i have in here with me that is going through God this with me. Through you. yes always 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 so we're going to go back with that question uh, yeah i have the question there on the screen as well um michael smith on facebook asked when were when you were in your healing process what things helped you most i'm going to say i'm still in my healing process uh -huh. and what is helping me most right now is uh, my faith in God first, mm -hmm. uh, my belief that he has put enough inside of me that I can keep going through the journey, and then my my village, the mm -hmm. people around me. Mm -hmm. um, that, that has helped me the most. Uh, my husband and my mother, uh, and just having good friends and children that I can be honest. Yes, honest. You know, I think uh, in the beginning, I didn't talk about it and when you don't talk about it i think i didn't talk about it because i was worried about how it was going to make them feel mm -hmm. and if it was mm -hmm. going to shame them mm -hmm. yep. and how people will see them and, and that's good yes oh, very and, common and especially mm -hmm. my uh, my husband i was really really guarded in having a conversation about it because of course we were married when the trauma happened and um <clears throat> he wasn't there to protect me and so i hid it not me. I just didn't talk about it because I didn't want him to feel like he failed me because he didn't. So I just didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so um, the day is so good. And and, and 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 Val, I have to say that 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 shame or not wanting to shame family was a trick of the enemy. Oh, and it is me. how the enemy robs us of our spirit. Amen. He gives us counterfeit fruit. So that shame yes. is basically pride. Well, yes. honey, let me tell you, I talk, uh, I openly talk about it because I knew that I could no longer walk around with this uh, angst. I, and I couldn't walk around. Mm -hmm. It's like I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. It's like I was walking and I stayed mm -hmm. in a room for so long where I wasn't even mm -hmm. in a um, Yep. But keep Ooh. on shining that light that Nina was talking about Amen. on the monster. Lord, right? Jesus. Shine that light on the monster oh. by talking about it, releasing it, and that's that work toward healing. Oh, God. Uh, Nina, oh. <coughs> answer the question. <laughs> she answer can't even answer, Nina. Nina. I'm like, what are you waiting on? Come on. What's <laughs> <laughs> the question? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Trigger <laughs> should we Question. The what question helps? was when you're in what helps you most when you're in your healing process or like Ooh, what can you do during that healing sorry. process? Okay, so this is a this feels like a loaded question for me. No, Just so no, we're clear, not that the intent was to leave it loaded, but that the impact on me is I feel that this is a loaded question because when I think of trauma, I realized in the, in our break between I was like, I didn't share <laughs> any of the history of mine at the beginning. Um, I have dissociative amnesia from something that happened to me when I was a child abuse, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And I do not remember it. Yep. Um, I don't remember those years of my life. And yep. then I all of a sudden remember third grade. Hey, That's yeah. it. I'm right there with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. And those memories actually have not come back to me. Oh, wow. Um, I had uh, sexual abuse by a teacher when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was raped when I was in college, an undergrad. Um, and, and there are other things that have mm -hmm. occurred in my life. Those are, those are the biggest ones, I think. Um, maybe not, actually. Suicide, there's all these things, right? Those these different ways, things that have, tra have left trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I hear like what's helped you most in your healing process so that, you know, essentially so you can get healed, right? This idea, I don't know that healed as in I'm perfect and, and it will never bother me again. I think that's like <coughs> this perfectionist illusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's um, a lie from Satan. Yeah. It is. From it's just the pit, yes. from the pit of hell. The pressure of that. You never yeah. lived, right? And so when I think about what continues to help me in my process is I think faith and knowing that this is temporary. Amen. Um, Trust in, in the reality that conflict will occur. Conflict is inevitable and that I am capable and have the capacity to survive conflict, mm -hmm. uh, survive abuse. Uh, 
community <laughs> and being transparent with that community. And if my community does not serve me, I'm real clear about this one. If my community does not serve me, you get cut off. I don't care if you're my okay, sister. Okay, right there. Family. That's in that process. Clink. I don't Clink. need to jump in on that, but that really hmm. has helped me so much. Boundaries. I was just going to say really boundaries are so important. To, I really had to get to a place mm -hmm. that, that I put those boundaries mm -hmm. in because the pain was so deep. Yes. That I am very, very protective yes. of that space and my space and if it's not good you're not serving to help yes. you're serving to hurt right what and resonates so, right you know, and so you have to be able to put those boundaries thank you yes you yes so i just that trauma i guess the last thing i say is that trauma the triggers that come up there they're when they popped in early and i'm like i gotta share this that the reality that if you have trauma and even if you have he i didn't have ptsd for 12 years i had ptsd and then i healed it worked on it did a bunch of things i did not meet criteria for ptsd that didn't mean i I didn't have trauma yeah, still, right? Right. And so there were things that were, didn't trigger me for years. And then my situation shifted. Uh, in one in particular, I became pregnant. Mm. And all of a sudden, brain was like, alarm system, alarm. Mm -hmm. Threats are activated. There's threats everywhere. Now, these were not real. They were based on something that had happened. Happened. Yeah. I was reacting to something in the past, not present responding. Mm -hmm. So I had to work through that when I was pregnant and I had to set a lot more boundaries, not because everybody else was threatening me, because I still felt threatened. There right. you go. Yeah, that's very good. So, okay. I know Stephanie. Come on, Stephanie. I know. It, I is, know. It's, it's, it is such a process, though. And I shared this earlier that it's a lie from Satan mm -hmm. to believe that we're going to be perfectly healed and this is never going to bother us again when something resonates deep down in your soul i think that god is the only thing that can fill it and you have to keep you know god is such a relation god that he wants to have that relationship with us and there's no counselor like the most high mm -hmm. he knows every dirty thing that had happened to me he knows those the things I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's a process that we have to accept. When I walk into heaven, I will be healed. That's mm -hmm. right. That's where my faith is. is. My life every single day is, woe is me. That's not what God has for me. Mm -hmm. God says I'm an overcomer because he's an overcomer. So when I choose and claim, and that's what I'm hearing with you, mm -hmm. we need to claim mm -hmm. what God says about us. So how I've healed, honestly, how I get my courageous spirit is I look to see who my identity in Christ oh, is. Man. What does God say about me? Because the world has a lot to say about mm -hmm. who Constantly I am. Come on, man. But God says that I'm perfectly and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. God says. And when I know that God says that about me, that's why I'm able to walk and talk and, 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 and sit on a platform like this and exactly. talk about it. Because I know what he says about me. I don't worry about what, what everybody else, else says. Own it's like, story. okay. Mm -hmm. and I, mean, you know? I just had to take a piece of that. Oh, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. So it's important for me to know who I am in Christ because when I'm firm and certain in who God says, and I love that you're talking about us being a warrior mm -hmm. because God talks about us being a warrior time and time and time again. One fourth of the fear not verses have to do with us battling. Mm -hmm. We are in a spiritual battle battle every single day. I don't care if you are a Billy Graham of this world. I guarantee you are doing some bidding for Satan. Oh. You are. Say that no. again. Uh oh, that's Wait, a whole hey, hey. <laughs> We are not moving that. <laughs> Would you please? That, that is a powerful right there. That's powerful. Can you repeat what you just said? I don't care if you're Billy Graham. Each and every <laughs> person is doing their bidding for Satan on some single day. And I know oh. some highly high rollers that are like, I don't do anything yeah. for Satan. Oh, I am not a lie. I am not. I'm like, well, excuse me, because your nose looks funny. I'm telling you what, Jesus Christ said, ain't nobody good. Filter, filter, red. No, don't tell. I get all Louisiana on you, girl. Mm -mm, I grew up there. I'm White girl Louisiana is dangerous. It's dangerous. Oh, oh I tell you what. I'm tickled. Tickled. Oh, tickled. So, I, I yield that I know you want some of this. Um, so, you know, uh, to answer the question, what do I do or what has been most helpful in my healing? One of the things that I will say, and most people that know me know this 
to be who that's just who I serve. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, because even oh, throughout oh. everything in my life and I before I knew it was serving, I, I claimed it to be or called it to be what I wanted for myself. Oh. I wish somebody had been this for me, so I'm that for someone else. Oh. And mm. so I do that on a consistent basis and you know what whatever it is okay Val, you need somebody to come mop your flow i don't even mop my own flow but come to mop yours you understand so i've i've been those things for people and that has been my refuge um but you say okay when it's in the middle of the night late in the midnight hour that's when i turn to my pen and pad that's when i mm-hmm. and so my writing um is is my safe place uh i i'm unmarried at this point uh husband you're gonna have to move my laptop and my, my pen and paper over when you come because that's what i sleep with right now but um so i sleep with my pen and pad uh and i mean i'm telling you it's it's a notebook under my pillow right now because god wakes me in the middle of the night and mm-hmm. i write but well, you so. have a piece as we're going there i think this is the opportunity time okay awesome that. awesome i think i'll share that and sometimes my mind gets a little wonky so i'm gonna pull it up but mm-hmm. um when we were talking earlier you uh were saying stephanie was saying you know that she went to god and she was in her you know her foundational places with god and you was like you know but where was god when i was being um right. raped, assaulted or abused or whatever and so this particular piece was written a couple years ago um and it's actually what landed me into radio in the first place um when i was on another station in another life but um you know just just trying to figure out in the middle of your situation or your storm where is god and so this particular piece was you know just me expressing where i was at that particular place and point so where is god today it's dark it's cold i'm afraid all alone struggling fighting can't do this on my own i'm going to church praying praising worshiping with all i've got giving him his glory through my song my dance and even my shout him being omniscient tells me that he knows i'm not present means everywhere i go he goes but where god today i'm in this world's wind going around and round being tossed about to no end his word promises he'd be a mother to the motherless father to the fatherless even be my friend yet the storms of life are raging can somebody please get Skype, tweet, or page him? I can't seem to get a prayer through. I'm losing my grip. I don't want to turn away, backslide, or slip from this place in which I know he wants me to be. Trying to get to that eternal spot called glory. I'm not just going and doing what I've heard. I'm actually reading, studying, living by his holy word. But the closer I get, the more he seems afar. Feeling like the three wise men chasing but a distant star. Where is God? today. The enemy is busy implementing all of his tricks and all of his stunts as I murmur loud moans, whimpers, and defeated grunts. Father, can you hear me? I'm calling out your name. Abba, Yahweh, Adonai, they're all one in the same. Jesus, Jesus, I'm losing this fight. Falling to my knees constantly morning, midday, and all through the night. He's in my car. He's at my job, my house, and now in my head, bending, twisting, misconstruing all the scriptures that I read. So where is God today? I need to feel him. I'm longing for something unfelt. The pain, anger, sorrow, grief, and hopelessness emotions I'm felt. Prayer after prayer, song after song. It seems this Christian journey has all gone wrong on a certain day like today. Lord, please help me find my way. It seems my light is growing dim. King of king, my God, my Elohim. Growing hard is the softness in my heart. My works are failing, leaving, gone. I'm falling apart. So when I I look at me, the me that I see, it's not the me hoped of dream, but it's the me that he'd have me be. No emotions or cares for this world, which would cause a need for rest. Cause God, you promised my latter days would be my best. Where is God today? He's strengthening my faith. He's making me tried and true to have me answer to a call of what he need to do. So when I look in the mirror, it's not the me that I know, but it's a true reflection of you, God. That's really starting to show way down deep in my heart where he was from the start, growing more and more inside of me, giving off his true reflection for the world to see. Where is your God today? Woo, girl. girl. I love that. My God, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, uh was good. That was he turned it up in here and I was already hot. Look, I'm a little hot too. I'm I'm checking. Nina, let me move over. I need to say God bless after that. but I am going to take this 
this to Brother Carter. And I'm going to have Brother Carter throw us what he would have us or have the panel. Is there anything you want to ask or have no, us? No, y'all doing good. Oh, we must be Brett Carter. Oh, oh, real good. Okay. Brett Carter was not extended. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I, actually, Abigail, I know that you had something because Abigail really put a lot of her and Jacob put a lot of time into putting this show together for us. I'm just so grateful. Um, go ahead and give us what you feel that you would like for us to. You have any questions? Oh, like a question. Yeah, actually. Um, so actually, when we were taking a break, um, I had asked Stephanie how she feels. Let me stand so they can see I'm a little short. Okay. Um, I had asked Stephanie how she feels about like comparison, right? Um, you're getting a lot of comments, Stephanie, saying like, you know, that's so great that you're able to heal from that. You know, you obviously have experienced a lot of trauma in your life. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people have experienced a degree of that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I think pe most people have experienced a degree of abuse and stuff. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, including myself, sometimes it's hard to admit that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And you think, oh, it's not that bad or, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a few minutes, you know, whatever the situation is. So I want to ask all of you, what is your opinion of the <coughs> word victim? And do oh, you identify with that word? Oh, I actually very did this good. on another show a couple of months ago. We talked about the because we live in a society right now where it's I'm a victim. Oh. I'm a victim. Oh, oh, iPhone this, me this. That's the <laughs> world we live in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, God told me very clearly when I was in my early 30s, girl. You're not in survival mode anymore. You're in thrive mode. Mm -hmm. That changed my trajectory of how I really thought about my life. I did survive. Mm -hmm. And now because I survived that, I learned so much about myself. God says I am. So because I have that knowledge of what God says about me, then I can turn around and mind so I can be positive. And I can say, okay, I'm not the victim mm. any longer. I am a survivor. I love people. I think everybody, you know, I, some people are like, oh, I'm a survivor of this and a survivor of that. I think everybody, like, when I say I'm a survivor, I think everybody should know, like, I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. That's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing. Yes. And I am, I'm not proud about what happened. But you're proud that you're how you had it. it. Yeah. It, you're exactly. A survivor. It's, it didn't you know kill you. It didn't break you. It didn't. And I can sit here on this panel with everybody and say, you know what happened to me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because it happened to me, I can thrive this world because God called me to his side. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'd be in this world if God didn't call me to his side. But because he called me to his side, I healed with wow. him and I know how to thrive in this really wild victim world that we live in. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, the same question, perfect, perfect. <laughs> the same question to me, I don't like the word victim. Mm -hmm. I don't even attach it to myself. I'm not, I'm a survivor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so do I walk around, uh, do I do I even like that victim mentality? I don't because I can't stand people using it. I, I think it becomes very manipulative. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, uh, and especially when I see women or even men uh, playing this victim thing, mm -hmm. it's very manipulative. So, no, I. Oh, pity me. Yeah, oh, pity, oh, pity me. me. Oh, pity me. It keeps you in a mindset, so too, I think, that. where like you can't come out of it. You know what I mean? Yes. If you constantly are like, I'm the victim i'm the victim you blame you yeah, make excuses for yourself you justify your wrongdoings whatever yes. that is you are only hurting your process because you're not able to to move on to from move that on. Mm -hmm. amen and that's that that's 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 scripture abigail that the, Bi the Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says that the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Oh, yes. And if you go on down further in that verse, in that verse, it says, "And and there uh, th that you shall eat the fruits of that." Mm -hmm. So if you are saying you are a victim, then you are a victim, mm -hmm. and you may be talking about a victim of A B, mm -hmm. and now you're continuing to claim yourself a victim. Now you're walking into C, and yeah. so you have to speak over yourself. Yes, I am an overcomer. Yes, I am healed. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Those affirmations come in. Yes, I'm I'm delivered and I'm set free from whatever that thing is. 
And, and you know, because I read my Bible, and I don't have no apology. The Bible says that you have to call those things that are not as though they were. So I am an overcomer. I am a survivor of abuse. I am going to be loved again. I am a wife. And I tell everybody, they be like, you a wife? I sure am. I sure am because I read my Bible. <laughs> He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Not a boo, not a side piece, not a, a girlfriend, not a soulmate. I don't know where this soulmate thing came from. God ain't saying nothing about no soulmate. Nothing. But I'm saying you have to. I don't want no soulmate. And, and, for those, and for those of you that read the Bible, sisters that, that ain't married, y'all right here looking for your boy. Stop looking for him. That wasn't your, That ain't your man. And, and, and if you read, if you <laughs> stop looking for the ass. Oh, and I'm waiting on my boy. No, no, no. You, you get it. Link it at the end. Book oh, ass. ass. Oh, there you go. You might end up with a book. Uh-huh. You might end up with a trifling. Y'all do understand. P-Man uh-huh. don't come for me. P-Man. Uh-huh. P-Man. Uh-huh. P-Man. Uh-huh. God did that. I'm just saying. That's, that's not your man. And that's if you read your Bible, but, then but you, you understand. you already said what you needed to say. You said a man that findeth the wife. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It don't say nothing about a wife that finds. That, that's it. So stop, <laughs> stop waiting on Boaz. And let me let me help you just a little further because I read my Bible. Boaz died shortly there after the wedding. So y'all need to be careful what you're speaking yeah. over yourself because you have right. to eat the fruit of that thing. And so no, I'm not a victim. I'm I'm, I'm a victor. Victor. Amen. I, I have won many battles. I got many trophies, on, and I'm able to showcase them as a testimony in the believer's eye, and even those that are non-believers. Do y'all help. not hear this? A hot table over here. Okay, okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we get Jacob? I'm going to get Jacob over here because I, you know, Jacob, come back if you want Goodness come. gracious. Golly, great balls of fire. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Woo. So I know today uh, a big topic has been healing, the mm-hmm. active healing process. Have I been healed or am I still in it? To me, the word that came up was scar. Like even if I have been healed, if I am ready to move forward, that scar is still there there. and doesn't go away. And you may not be able to see it. You won't be able to see it unless I choose to show, show it, it to you. you. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on, Joseph. Oh, Jacob. 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 I keep saying Joseph. Bible names. You got it. I didn't get it. Was that a question or you was just punching us? I was just sitting there. You better talk, sir. Jacob. 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 Jac
So when we look at scars, a testimony. Wow. And just like that's Jesus's testimony for how we got there. He had to face his biggest fear yeah. on that cross. Mm. Just like we have to face our biggest fear here. So no, God's going to be walking around showing everybody. I can't wait to go to him. And go, Can I see them scars? Like they're listen, real. Listen, and, and so, so I'm, I'm gonna answer that question. I don't know if you was finished, but it just hit me right there. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Stephanie. That's you know, I'm half raised. Don't worry about it. Okay. But, but to me, the scars are there. They're stitches in my quilt. Mm -hmm. And when anybody uses a quilt, nobody's sitting there examining the stitches. All you oh, see like is this it. beautiful, completed work of art mm -hmm. that like you say came from grandma's apron from yes. an old curtain from an old bed cover and those stitches in that quilt create or make the covering that god has called me to be in a day and time such as this for everybody anybody oh. because the bible says that we're to be all things for all people mm -hmm. and so those stitches scars mm -hmm. in my victor quilt oh. will help cover those until they can get to that place that they're able totally surrender submit or get into that foundational place with god and so i'm i'm grateful for every stitch and you know i've had multiple surgeries got lots of scars yeah. and i tell y'all listen when when i had my lump lumpectomy several years ago i run around flashing everybody showing look at my scar it healed nicely and so that is what i do i'm sorry that's the nurse in me i mean i was flashing look look i mean you know what i'm saying a amen <laughs> so i'm saying that to say that i flash my scars now yeah. i flash my scars Ooh. now I'm, I'm i'm okay to say i'm married to a crackhead yes mm -hmm. I, my mama was a crackhead mm -hmm. i have no problem saying that so my scars i don't know if they're a badge yeah. of honor but they're definitely a doorway for me to enter because sometimes we get so 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 heavily bound that we're no earthly good come on and man. You you yeah. want to preach and beat them with the word of God. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's my scar that actually makes my yeah. situation relevant to you. Yeah. And you can't be re relational if you're not relevant. Come, come on now. So I, I don't want to cut you off, but our time has been well spent uh, here on I, I got to leave you with Hold the on therapist, a second. Though, baby. Let me finish. Okay, well, go ahead. I've right, been, been quiet all I day. <laughs> Let me finish this one sentence, okay? okay? okay. <laughs> all right, because we, we only have five minutes to show. And I know you want everybody to have an opportunity to speak about uh, what they've learned on the show today. So having said that. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. But I appreciate it. So what he was saying to y'all in a nutshell, keep it short. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, babe. I want you, Nina, I need, I need you, therapist. Okay, to quick. To answer what you that mean? same question. The victim question. The victim question. So I'm a, and the scar. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to come from the drama th therapist perspective here, right? With, with of course, my... my individual culture experiences, but when I work with, with roles, I work with human roles, right? And hundreds and hundreds of roles that were made up within us, characters, parts that pop out. And we get this victim, right? I've been victimized and not identify as a victim. Mm -hmm. if, if you do end up identifying as a victim, don't put yourself down for it. That can be temporary. You can move past eating that narrative that the victimizer has given you. The victimizer needs you to be a victim in order to be a victimizer. That's how it works. If you do not eat that narrative, you can become a victor, a survivor. Right? Oh. And so we have this triangle of like, even when people experience it, I'm always asking, when some, any kind of drama happens, are you being the victor, the victimizer, or the victim right now? Where, where are you in the triangle right now? And where is that it where you're intended to be, right? And so I hope that answers that question, like the victim yes. versus the victimizer, right? Yes. And then when I think about Scott, Ours. There is this metaphor that I offer clients. I hear this all the time. I myself even thought it. Nina, if I forget my trauma, then that means it could happen to me again. I don't. I don't know if I should go to therapy. Oh. I don't know if I should work. I don't know if I should talk about it or be transparent or speak my testimony about it because then that means it could happen to me again. And I said, no, no, no. Listen, listen. You are an emotional warrior. You have been through something, and if you are willing to shine a light on it and go through the process of healing on this, you will come out the other side with what we in the therapy world call post-traumatic growth. You will be more resilient as an individual and a human being, and then you can help other people with what you have been through, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in this room, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are willing to do that work, you can do this. I said the metaphor that I offer is right now, when you're in survival mode, you got your jacket on, you got oh. your weapons with you, you could rest knuckles, you got earrings to turn out, you could got your Vaseline on you, you need to go. Mm -hmm. but You're talking about language, fight. Right? <laughs> so, originally from New York, we didn't yeah, talk about that. So, uh, okay. <laughs> but here's the thing, right, is that that's what we say, is right, then, then I lose that, right? And that's the fear. And so people won't do the work because they're afraid. 
afraid that they're going to lose that warrior. And I said, no, no, no. To imagine that you're going to be so confident in yourself and how you move forward that what it is, is you don't need to wear it all the time. It's on the wall right behind you. You yes. could grab it at a snap. Yes. snap. At a snap, you, but you don't need to wear it and carry the weight of it oh with you forever. Ooh, that's now, good right there. If that's not a way to end this fantastic show, it's at the end. It's that time <laughs> I know. Oh, my I ass. know. <laughs> Oh, but I have to say, I'm, I'm going to go around and I'm going to make it real quick because I want guys to say where you are, how they can find. I mm -hmm. want you to also let them know, uh, I'm going to put this book up, Fear Not For You Are Redeemed. It's going to be on my mm -hmm. website and we also attach a link where you can go and purchase it. But I'm going to start off with Stephanie, if you can, uh, let them know real quick before they kick us off the air, where you, how they can get in touch with All you right. where they can bring you in my name is real tricky because i spell with an f everybody wants to spell my name wrong it's s-t-e-f-a-n-i-e-a-a-n-e.com stephanie jane um, you can go on there and you can find out how to get a hold of me in many different ways so um i'd love for you to come on there i love to share my testimony in all kinds of different places i love to go into churches i teach in halfway houses anywhere so um i love to share my hope and healing in jesus christ and she Amen. will be back and Amen. nina nina garcia here i am most easily found probably at drama therapist nina on instagram private practice houston creative arts with an s therapy.com uh, and if you are interested in learning more about triggers i host the podcast triggered can we play with that where we deal with guess what triggering topics we transform you know hard conversations into teachable moments and I'm going to be on there with her. Uh, awesome. Coming soon. <laughs> awesome. And I yielded. I, hello, 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 hello. I am Yielded. You can find me on Facebook at Yielded. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at IB Yielded. Or you can find me here every Tuesday. 4 to 7 p.m. on Raise the Praise 100 with the Fire Show. We're always putting a little heat to the word on the street. And if you tune in 4 to 7, be prepared to tell the world what you don't like. Because we give you an opportunity. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> All righty then. And Brother Carter. And I, I don't, I'm not going to tell you how to follow me or nothing like that. I just want to <laughs> It, it doesn't matter uh, to me. It doesn't matter what type of drama, or trauma you've gone through, what kind of violation you've gone through and throughout your life. The first point of attack, I believe that everyone have to first admit that there is an issue. There is a problem. There is a situation that you need to evolve from. And if you don't ever admit it, you'll never get started to your place called healing. So start there. I learned that in the 12-step program. I'm a crack fiend, crack head or whatever, in the trap or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so admitting is is the first step. So please, uh, recognizing that you do may have some trauma that you have in your life, and you can start healing by admitting it. Right. Amen. And uh, I, I'm going to do it. I'm running over. I'm going to do it uh, because if we cannot, this has been a powerful show. Uh, Abigail and Jacob, if y'all could go ahead and end off. One second. Trying to get everything in order. today talking about it i think the biggest disservice you can do as as a survivor is to keep your mouth shut about it and to not you know encourage others to heal from that and and um i just appreciate you ladies coming here today and, and having this conversation it was definitely like i said a heavier topic but i think we helped a lot of people today Man. and we did it with smiles on our face yes. oh yeah you can't get to that place in life you really will <laughs> jacob uh, I was just reminded uh, that God will choose to distribute strength in the most surprising sp places. Uh, it isn't in the abusive father or the drug addicted husband. Uh, it's with the women in this room right here and now. So uh, thank you so much for being here on our show and sharing your stories. Bless you. Bless you. All righty. And again, I see why y'all keep that mic away from Jacob. <laughs> I thank you so much. Uh, you guys have no idea. It um, was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thank you guys. You guys have no idea how grateful I am that you guys accepted the invitation. Uh, 
of course, that invitation will be extended again mm -hmm. and again. Whenever we have powerful women that don't mind telling mm -hmm. their story and that are uh, candid and honest and want to see the world in a better place, uh, I want to keep bringing you back. So you guys will be back again. I, I want to say thank you guys for wrapping your arms around me this morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to be this heavy. Uh, I never expect when God does what he does, but he does it so perfectly. So thank you guys. I know that there's listeners. Uh, the Facebook was on fire. This fire. Time. On fire. fire. So I thank you guys so much for continuing to support the Love and Victory show every Saturday morning from 7 to 10. Uh, continue to follow us, like us, share us. Uh, we're on Instagram, LV with Val. We're on Facebook, uh, the Lo LV with Val. Everything LV be with Val except for our YouTube The Love and Victory Show and again until next Saturday oh God hug someone love someone let them know that they are important and remember you are very important love you and we're out turn to the camera just go bye